Hi everyone. In the previous videos in this series where we talk about the armor of God, we already talked about the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and in this video we're going to talk about the shoes. Do you know what the shoes represent? Well, let's get into the video. All right, now let's take a look at what the Bible says about the shoes when it comes to the armor of God. Whenever you go through trials and tribulations, you know those times where you need to remind yourself about the armor of God, to put it on. Remember that you can always find it in the last chapter of Ephesians. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. So the shoes for your feet represents the readiness of the gospel of peace, meaning it is the gospel, the good news that saved you, and now you have to share that good news to other people. It is also called the shoes of readiness because it means that you have to be ready at all times. 2 Timothy 4 verse 2 says, Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Did you hear that? Pastors, preachers, church. It says, preach the word. It doesn't say only preach motivational messages. It doesn't say only preach what you want to preach from the scripture. It says, preach the word. That means the full truth of the gospel. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. When was the last time that you shared the gospel? Think back. This is not a rhetorical question. I really mean, think, think back. When was the last time that you shared the gospel? And then when you did it, did you share the gospel in truth and love, the way the Holy Spirit led you to do it? Or did you just share the gospel in a way that you, you, you knew this person wanted to hear it? Just by telling them good stories, giving them a little bit of a mo motivational message there. We as the church, we have the responsibility to listen to the Holy Spirit. We need to move back to Scripture. We need to speak the truth in love. Very important. Because it is only the truth that can set people free. Romans 10 verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in Him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. You know, unfortunately, the devil deceives so many Christians in the world today because they focus so much on this rat race, on this temporary world, that they forget to share the gospel of Christ to those who are lost. If that is you, then you need to know that you don't have your shoes on. And if you don't have your shoes on, the shoes can't protect you in this earthly world because you're too stressed. You're too busy with the things of this world. But Matthew 6 verse 31 says, Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. As a child of God, you should not worry about these things. 
It is the unbelievers who don't have God as their father, who are worrying, stressing because they can only rely on themselves, maybe a few friends, their family, the money, the career. And we know that you can't rely on these things because none of it is stable. This world is always changing. There's always ups and downs. The only thing that we can rely on is God, who is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. And so you should rely on God. And when you fully trust God, with everything that you are, you trust Him about everything, your children, your career, everything, then you will also experience the peace of God. John 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Don't you know that the gospel does not just bring freedom, but it also brings peace. That is why it is called the gospel of peace. And you need to know, you need to accept it, that the devil will use the temporary things, the material things, even people in this temporary world to distract you. You will be persecuted. You will go through tribulations. You will go through tough times in this world. But don't lose heart. Because Jesus says in John 16 verse 33, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. The Bible says that you have to be ready in season and out of season. So what are you doing right now? What are you doing with your life? What are you busy with? Are you busy with the things of the Lord? Or are you busy with the temporary things of this world that is passing away? 1 John 2 verse 17 says, And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Are you doing the will of God? We know that God is righteous. Are you doing the will of God? You know, not only should we use the shoes for sharing the gospel, bringing the good news, but we should also use it to stand for righteousness, to stand against the devil and his schemes. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13, Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. And Galatians 5 verse 1 says, For freedom Christ has set us free, stand firm therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. You know, you use your earthly shoes, your material shoes, for almost everything. You are not going to jog without shoes. You're not going to climb a mountain without shoes. And you're not even going to go to work without shoes. So why, when it comes to your spiritual journey, which is far more important, are you walking without your shoes? Again, Romans 10 verse 15 says, And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. As a real reborn Christian, you have to bring the gospel, the good news, to those who are lost, to those who are on the road to hell. And if you are a true child of God, you will care about other people because you love God and you love people. So you will care about where they will end up. So don't keep the gospel to yourself. Share it in truth and in love. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 15 For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one a fragrance from death to death, to the other a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not like so many peddlers of God's word, but as men of sincerity, as commissioned by God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. Are you a sweet smelling aroma to other people? Do they enjoy talking to you? Do they see there's something different about you? You are like a light that they are drawn to. Or are you one of those self-righteous Christians and you just look angry all the time and people don't even want to talk to you? You have to share the gospel in truth and in love. It is so important. It is crucial. And you have to learn how to share the gospel to different types of people. Listen to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 20. To the Jews, I became as a Jew 
in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak, I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about the shield of faith. It's going to be a very interesting video that you don't want to miss. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please remember to subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss that video. In the meantime, if you want to know how to share the gospel effectively, then please watch these videos here and I'll see you there. And always remember, God loves you. And I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee.